Hi, I'm Mark Keene from Keene Engineering. I'm going to show you a product we're building for a customer right now, which is a four inch gravel pump. Now what a gravel pump does, it allows you to pump solids long distances away. If I wanted to pump material, you know, up to three and a half inch rocks, almost, you know, 1500 feet away, no problem. I would lift the material, you know, 50, 60, 70 feet above the water level. I can do it. And that's what a four inch gravel pump. Now these are not inexpensive systems. These are designed for a, a more professional type contractor who wants to pump material long distances or guys in Africa purchase a lot of these and they're using them for like uh, guys digging out pits. They'll actually lower the gravel pump into the pit and pump up, you know, the diamond bearing material up above the water level up onto the, the short eye, possibly going into jigs or some kind of a sluice box or anything else. But the main thing behind it is designed to pump gravel great distance. Now the interesting thing about a gravel pump too is they pump a, a lot of material with not a lot of water. <clears throat> See if you take a conventional gold dredge, you're sucking up like maybe a 5-10% slurry. If you take a gravel pump, you're pumping up more like anywhere from like 10% to even exceeding 30% slurry. So you might be discharging let's say a thousand gallons a minute but almost a third of that is material. So very heavy heavy slurry with the gravel pump system. So we're preparing this for a customer right now and just go over some of the key features. Okay, since we're talking about the pump, I'm going to cover a few things that we do special to the pump. Again, this is a not this is a very expensive gravel pump system. Just the pump alone is probably probably ballpark around ten thousand dollars. The pump probably weighs close somewhere between four and five hundred pounds. So these things are very 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 stout. The construction of the housing and the impeller, I think it's like a. a uh, Burnell 600. I mean, it's harder than a drill bit. These things just last forever. I've actually worn a couple of them out, but that was after you know, three probably three to five thousand hours. So they really seem to hold up well. Um, now, a couple of things we do a little differently on the pumps is we actually use a grease injection system. See, on the shaft, there's a grease injection system that is used for packing. Um, I'm not going to get into great depth of it, but you have to re repack these at least once a day. You have a spring-loaded grease system that always pumps a nice even flow of grease into your, your packing. And if you allow your packing to get real sloppy, you can suck air or blow water out. So um, probably the biggest maintenance on this whole machine is keeping the grease system in, in check. And also you have some bolts here. And if you can see those inside or not, you have to periodically tighten up these bolt, this bolt here. And you got one on this side as well. Okay, and that's your... Uh, that's the type of your packing. So, well, again, that's a very important aspect of the machine. It has to be maintained properly. Now, if we come over on, on this side of the pump, you know, we do a couple things differently from the rest of the people out there. First of all, we use an, only an American-made pump. I do not like the Chinese pumps whatsoever. This thing is made in the United States. It's bulletproof. And I've actually owned almost, uh, half a dozen of these in my lifetime. So I've been, when I was like 18 years old, I bought my first gravel pump and I was doing side jobs. So I know how strong and how well these things hold up. So on the intake, we actually add on a vacuum gauge and this helps determine whether you have a rock jam in the system or you have sand loading up or you have uh, any other potential diagnostic issues you can tell with your vacuum. And that goes same for the pressure system too, okay? I have on the if you have a blockage in the discharge you can actually determine it by the pressure you have in here so these are very important aspects to have on a gravel pump and you'll notice we have an open pipe right here this is just a big open ball valve oh I usually take like a wood dowel with me and sometimes you get a plug in the system in here you just pop your wood dowel out okay and break any jams loose and, and let a little water blow out and then you can close it again so uh, again, the beauty of a, of a pump like this, this is only a four-inch, but it can handle a big sphere. See, most gravel pumps out there can only, like a, a four-inch by four-inch pump, typically they're good for maybe a half-inch to maybe an inch and a half sphere. We use this type of a pump because it can handle large material. A four-inch pump can handle about a three-and-a-half-inch sphere. A six-inch pump can handle about a five-and-a-half-inch sphere. And that's way bigger than the most other gravel pump. Now they're not quite as efficient when it comes to pumping water as a conventional pump, but the big deal is you can pump beer cans and tennis shoes and ropes and trash bags. We'll go through this pump without any problems and that's why we use this for both mining and reclamation. Um, now let's walk back this way a little bit. Come over here. 
Um, you'll see we also add on like a, a, a twin disc or this is called a, a NORCAD type uh, clutch system. So you can engage and disengage your clutch on here. Now I'll, I'll show you real briefly how it works. I'm going to go ahead and turn my key on. I let it warm up for about 30 seconds or so to get the glow plugs working. And then I'll start the engine that you'll see me engage and disengage the clutch. And obviously you'll see the shaft start turning on the pump. So uh, you have to have the system primed first, but I'm not gonna get into detail that. Basically, this pump has to be flooded full of water before you pull your clutch in. You know, you, you, can, you can run it dry for a few minutes, but traditionally it's best to keep it full of water before you actually start, before you actually engage the clutch. So the beauty is you can start your engine and run the motor and get your compressor working or any other accessories you want, get everything warmed up and ready, and when you're ready to go, you just pull the clutch in. So let's just try it real quick. side of the motor you can see you got your fuel filter and your oil filter system your, your throttle control system and an instrumentation panel uh, now these panels we have them done a little differently from stock uh, we basically make sure we have a tachometer put in it so we know what engine rpms so we have that an hour meter a uh, oil temperature and an oil an oil temperature and an oil pressure gauge all important facets to keep the, these engines running now this one's actually equipped with a um, a Murphy panel and what Murphy panel basically means if you have the oil pressure gets too high or the oil pressure gets too low or the engine gets too hot the engine will shut itself off automatically not all all engines are equipped like this but this one happens to be set up that way um, and also you have your hour meter down here and that's super critical so you know how many hours you have on the engine so you can properly monitor your proper oil changes and everything else now let's walk over to this side here now, this is an option we put on, on the different uh, gravel pump systems. We have an air compressor. We actually have, the guys are actually gonna be diving underwater, breathing. So, why have another engine if you can drive it off this main unit right here? So, we've actually come off the motor and we actually manufacture our, our own um, extension shafts and we adapt a pulley to it and that drives the air compressor. Now you notice this spaghetti of, of air hoses coming off the intake. Well, obviously, you don't want to be breathing, you know, carbon monoxide or diesel fumes or anything else. So what we do is we have it equipped with a little air tower here. And this will be typically, if there's like a handrail on the boat, or we we'll typically just hose clamp that up to something like this, and we'll set this off, you know, 10 to 15 feet away from the engine. That ensures that you're, you're gonna be sucking in, you know, clean, fresh air. All right, with the diesel engine, before you start it up, obviously you have to have uh, diesel in the motor and you have to have a fuel tank. You can see we just have a small temporary fuel tank set up. So the first thing we do is we attach the intake of the, of the fuel line system and we attach the discharge diesel line. Which So you have two lines. You have an intake pulling the diesel out and you have a return line going back into the diesel tank. Um, but again, before you start the motor, you have to prime the system and what I'm referring to priming is you have a button right here and you have to pump this button and I can actually feel the diesel fuel flowing through in fact you can even see my my discharge line jumping when I pump on it okay so I know for sure that I'm definitely primed at this point so now I can go ahead and start my engine and also you want to make sure that you have your you know when you start it you want to start them at low throttle maybe about quarter throttle or so so to start it Turn the key, let it sit for about 60 seconds or so. I'm about 1800 RPM. 
was just saying there, when we run the diesel engines, we run them typically probably around about the 15 to 2,000 2, RPMs, probably more of an average RPM is about 1,800. But again, every situation is going to require different throttle settings for if you have a longer hose or a higher hose, if you have a diver who's, who, can suck, who can handle a lot more suction, um, there's a lot of variables involved. Oh, also, by the way, this air cleaner is upside down right now. Under normal operating procedures, you just take this and flip it all the way up. So this would be the, the, the top of it. So the air would come in from the top and go straight down. The good thing when we're dealing with a gravel pump system, we're typically in a more wetter and type environment, so we don't have the massive dust issues and stuff. But it's super critical that you definitely maintain your air cleaners and your oil. Speaking of the oil, this is an oil-cooled engine, so it is super critical that when you do um, change your oil, you buy the best possible oil you can get for the motor. I have a problem with some customers over in West Africa. They buy, you know, the cheapest oil they can find, and guess what? The oil in Africa is just filtered dirty motor oil. So if you buy one of these and you're going overseas or wherever you do, always buy the best oil you can if you want these engines to, to live a long time. All right, when you're dealing with a, a large engine and a large gravel pump like this, you know, adjusting the belts and stuff can be somewhat challenging. So we came up with our own system. If you can focus in here, you'll see that we have, you know, relatively large hardware in this, basically, loosen up this nut and bolt assembly on all four corners. You know, notice we have a double nut system here. Well, if you want to tension up your belt, you basically, there's threads in this area, you can basically create a gap in here and raise and lower the engine. So rather than have to put shims underneath the engine or any other type of you know belt tensioning mechanism, we just basically loosen all four bolts up, we'll take a big wrench and we'll you know, maybe take this about a half a turn this direction, half a turn, half a turn, half a turn. You can actually take that engine and you can set it so you can go, you know, pitch it whichever direction you want to just by adjusting the motor. And that makes it really nice when you start doing some fine tuning on your, your belt adjustment. Um, once, we, once we get the machine all assembled and running, we're gonna go ahead and run the, the pump for approximately an hour. And when we run this pump, what it does, it just kind of rinses the bearings clean and the shaft clean, make sure any debris is falling out. And then we have a drain plug right here that you can see, and we just drain all the, uh, the oil out of, out of the, uh, the body. So then we'll go ahead and uh, put the cap back on it. And we use, uh, surprisingly, it's almost like a hydraulic oil. If you want, it's a mobile HD ISO 46. And this is the uh, oil that we go ahead and replace back into here. This oil should be probably replaced once a year, somewhere in that range. But again, back to the maintenance on the pump. Uh, you want to make sure your fluid levels are correct. We just measure a precise amount. How many ounces was it? 16. 16 ounces of the, of the oil. And if you want to take another sweep on over here, come over this way, uh, you can see your, your packing system a little closer. Um, probably the most maintenance on the entire machine you're gonna to have to do is you have to maintain this packing. It, if you have it too much pressure, you can create issues such as not allowing oil to get transferred onto the shaft and into the packing. If you have it too loose, air can get sucked up, you can lose prime. So again, it's very important that you understand and maintain this. I recommend everybody who buys a gravel pump, they purchase a, a small, it's like a packing tool kit. Basically, it's like a flexible screwdriver with a corkscrew on the end. And you use that to put in your, your packing, your lantern ring, and then multiple layers of, of the, the grease packing. Very important if you want the machine to, to live a long time and you want to do a project that's relatively grease free.